Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this numeric expression. And that's just kind of fancy math talk for, let's do this math problem, right? So what do we have here? We have some numbers and some basic math operations, some addition and subtraction, and we have a few fractions. Doesn't seem to be overly difficult, but if I said do not use your calculator, well, that could change uh, this problem, how difficult it is for a lot of you because we're so used to using our calculator. All we want to do here is use that calculator in between our ears, that supercomputer that we all have. And we want to practice old school math, old school arithmetic, all that good stuff that you learned back in elementary school and middle school. So just get yourself a piece of paper and pencil and see if you can figure this thing out. Now, a lot of you might be saying, oh, I could do that without a calculator. I could do this problem. And you'll rush the problem because you're not treating it with its due respect. Any math problem you tackle, okay, or you attempt to do, uh, you want to slow yourself down and really stop and think and then just kind of do it step by step by step by step. Because one of the phrases I've heard for so many years is when someone does a math problem and then they have the wrong answer, and then I show them the correct answer, they'll say, I knew that, I knew that. They'll understand their mistake. But guess what? You still got the wrong answer because you're not careful, all right? So slow yourself down. Do things step by step by step. But if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct solution uh, to the problem in just one second. And then we're going to go through this thing step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you could be successful in mathematics. I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Maybe you failed a couple math classes. Listen, forget all that stuff. If you have great math instruction, you're going to be able to understand math and really kind of build up your skill set. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying math for a specific test, uh, something like uh, the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, or maybe you're homeschooling math, whatever the reason is, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it. In the description of this video, I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you need to learn how to take your own great, awesome math notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. And there you go. So we have 9 minus 14, of course, this is in um, parentheses, plus one third times. Uh, negative 12 plus 1 fifth. This is equal to negative 134 over 15. Of course, you could have this as a mixed number, but you would have to have uh, uh, gotten this answer first before you would have a mixed number. Uh, so anyways, when it comes to mixed numbers, in other words, if your answer is 4 thirds, don't uh, feel compelled to write that, you know, basically do this. Oh, I have to do this step or my teacher won't like my answer. Uh, uh, three goes into four, one. So you go like this, da, 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 da. you're just basically doing division, right? Don't take your improper fractions and voluntarily write them as the mixed numbers. So here, okay, if you got this answer and you did the mixed number, well, you would still have seen that you would have gotten this answer. Okay. So that's just a little bit of a suggestion right there. Just always make sure your answers are fully reduced when it comes to fractions, all right? But if you got this answer, pretty impressive stuff. Matter of fact, so impressive, I'm going to reward you with a nice happy face, an A+, 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And uh, what are some of the skills that we're going to need to know in order to um, solve this problem? Well, uh, anytime you're dealing with various math operations, you're going to have to know uh, the order of operations, right? That's the PEMDAS stuff that hopefully you know about. So parentheses, E is exponents or powers, and M, M and D is multiplication and division, and A and S is addition and subtraction. And we do this from left to right. There's actually more I'm not even getting into on PEMDAS uh, if you need help with the order of operations, I'm going to give you uh, some guidance on all these skills at the end of this video. But anyways, this is one of these things that you need to understand to do this problem. You're also going to have to know how to deal with positive and negative numbers. And you're going to need to know something about fractions. Okay, so we um, got to know about fractions. We have to know about positive and negative numbers. And we need to always keep in mind the order of operations where we're simplifying a numeric expression, we got a lot of different operations going on here, right? We got multiplication, addition, and subtraction. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And when it comes to PEMNAS, we always start with P, and P is what? That's parentheses. So you can see we have two sets of parentheses. So effectively, uh, these are like two separate problems we're going to have to figure the, uh, out, and that's what we're going to do first. All right, so we're just going to take this uh, one uh, group at a time. So this, anytime you have um, uh, something in mathematics that's basically surrounded by parentheses, okay, these parentheses here, or brackets, and we even have these type of squiggly brackets like that. These are called grouping symbols. So this is a group, okay? So it doesn't just have to be parentheses. Any one of these here in terms of PEMDAS, if you saw brackets, you still would have to do what's inside that group first. So we'll just take this one step at a time and figure out what 9 minus 14 is, and then we'll come and deal with this uh, fraction stuff here in a second. So 9 minus 14, what is the answer? Well, hopefully you recognize this as 9 plus a negative 14. Of course, that will be equal to negative 5. So if you didn't get this right, that's a good indication that you need to review positive and negative number uh, rules. Don't feel so bad because a lot of um, students out there don't know how to deal with positive and negative numbers as strongly as they think they do. Okay. All right. So we have this done. So next, let's go ahead and work on uh, what um, uh, the solution is to this part of the problem. And these are kind of like problems within problems. So we've got to figure out negative 12 plus 1 fifth, okay? And of course, we're going to have to know something about how to add fractions. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this now. All right, so negative 12 plus 1 fifth, the, uh, the thing about this is you want to think of negative uh, 12 as a fraction. So how can you think of a number as a fraction? Easy, just put it over 1, okay? So now I have negative 12 plus 1 fifth. So now I'm going to be adding fractions. And you can't add or subtract fractions unless the denominators are the same. So we have 1 here and 5 here. These are not the same denominators. So we need the, a common denominator or the LCD. And the LCD here is 5, right? Now, uh, why is the LCD 5 or how do you add and subtract fractions? These are skills that you're going to want to um, kind of like review outside of this video. It would just be too much for me to try to teach all this in here, but just make mental notes. You're like, oh yeah, I don't understand positive and negative numbers. I don't understand the LCD or whatever you, it is that you don't understand. That's actually good. If you're like saying, I don't get this, that's a like a specific to-do list to go back and review because once you improve those skills, you're going to be much, much better in mathematics. But in order to um, get uh, this, these denominators the same, I have to change this 1 into a 5. So I'm just going to multiply it by a 5. So I multiply that denominator by 5. I have to multiply the numerator by 5. So I'm going to get 5 times 1 is, of course, 5. And 5 times negative 12 is negative 60. So now I've just kind of rewrote this fraction as negative 60 plus 1 fifth. So this is easy now to do because the denominators are the same, 5 and 5. So I simply add the numerators. So negative 60 plus 1 is negative 59. Negative 59, again, if you don't understand that, you need to review um, the rules for positive and negative numbers. All right, so negative 59 over 5, right? So I don't know if I said it's just negative 59, but negative uh, 59 over 5 is the uh, sum of these two numbers, negative 12 plus 1 fifth. Okay, so this part of the problem is done. We're just working this down step by step. So that uh, gets us to this point. So we have negative 5 plus 1 third. And when we added up those two numbers, negative 12 and uh, what was that? 1 fifth, we got a negative 59 over 5. All right, so let's go ahead and deal with uh, our next move here. And remember, we are talking now about order of operations. So what do we have? Well, we have addition here. And one third, this number outside of this parentheses, what is this operation here? That's multiplication, all right? So that's one third times negative 59 over five. So we're gonna do multiplication before addition. So we've got to figure out what one third times negative uh, 59 over five is. So how do you multiply fractions? Easy, right? Uh, well, hopefully you know it's easy. Again, if you don't know, that's something you have to review. You simply uh, multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times negative 59 is negative 5, negative, uh, fi uh, negative uh, 59, excuse me. And 3 times 5 is going to be 15. 
All right, so there you go. Even myself, I got to slow myself down. I'm just, you know, rattling off a bunch of numbers. But, you know, doing math is a, um, you know, it's really requires a high level of focus. It's like driving a car, right? So let's say, you know, I'm just kind of stopped and I just can't help myself. So here, here you're driving down the road, okay, or whatever the case is, and you're driving. If you take your your um, hands off the wheel just for one second, you know that's when bad things happen. That's when you can drift all over the place, and you know we don't want to even think about the results. What could happen? Same thing in a math problem, right? You got to keep your hands on the wheel. It's constant game of focus, right? Focus is key. It's essential to solve any math problem. All right, so let's go ahead and continue to focus. So here we're, we're just multiplying these two fractions and we get uh, negative 59 over 15. So we're down to this now, negative five plus negative 59 over 15. How do we do this? Well, again, we're gonna um, think of five as uh, this negative five as a fraction. So we'll put that over one. So now this is gonna be negative five over one plus negative 59 over 15. All right, so we don't have common denominator, so we're gonna to have to get that LCD. LCD is 15, and I'm kind of breezing through this. Uh, again, hopefully you understand how to add and subtract fractions, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this one by 15 so I can get the, uh, uh, the denominators being the same, which is 15. But if I multiply the denominator by 15, I gotta multiply that numerator by 15. So 15 times negative five is gonna be negative 75. 15 times one is 15. Okay, then that's going to be um, added to negative 59 plus 15. Now, finally, finally, I can go ahead and uh, get the answer. So the answer is going to be 15 over negative, uh, seven, or negative 75 plus negative 59 is negative 134 uh, over 15. Okay, I kind of said that wrong there for a second. But that is the final answer. So when you think about it, you know, this was a fair amount of work, okay? Um, to actually, you know, simplify this problem without the aid of a calculator. If you look at the problem in and of itself, it, you know, it doesn't seem to be overly intimidating, but, you know, if you're not using a calculator, you know, you can just see that you have to be highly focused. Even uh, when you think a problem is a basic math problem, when you just don't respect a math problem, if you just like, I don't have to do... I don't really have to focus that much to get the answer. I think that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's like, if you have an attitude of like, oh, I can do that real quick without even thinking about it, right? You can't do math, any math problem without, you know, uh, being focused because as soon as you stop focusing and just kind of go into automatic phase, you're going to make mistakes. And that's why I like to do these like basic problems like this uh, to kind of like, you know, illustrate that point, right? Because most of you out there probably could do this problem. Hopefully you could do this problem. But if you got this problem wrong and you understand, you understood your error, really what you're learning is, oh, I got to focus more and I got to really double check my work. And that is really the essence of doing mathematics. All right. If this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And by the way, let me go ahead and give you some additional guidance on those of you that are struggling uh, with uh, these topics, whether it's fractions, positive and negative numbers, et cetera. I'd probably recommend uh, one or two uh, courses of mine, my Math Foundations course, which is a nice little mini course or my pre-algebra course. Uh, again, you can find that at my math help program. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.